Hey guys, let's take a look at this monstrously long title, Distributive Property of Rational Expressions that Contain Positive... Oh, oh. Okay, let's, let's break it down here. Distributive property, you know what that is, right? You just distribute junk and you multiply it, right? A rational expression, an expression is just a bunch of, uh, just a hunk of terms, right? X's and numbers and, and you know, constants, that kind of thing. Rational means that you can express it as a fraction, three-fourths. 1 8th, 12 19th, and so on. Okay, positive exponents, you know, positive exponents. That's pretty self explanatory. So when you break this up into chunks, it's a lot easier to handle. But let's go to something first. And uh, again, the whole idea behind algebra and even higher math is that at some point somebody figured out that, you know, this works every single time I do it with real numbers like 12 and 8 and 7 and Oh, let's see, very young numbers like uh, 51. That's a very young number. So if it works for all those numbers, it'll work for X's and Y's and all that jazz. We just, you know, put them in the place of the numbers. So look at this. Can you do this kind of problem? Yeah, of course you can. Okay, unless you recently hit your head with a shovel. So 3 times 5 is 15. 7 times 4, 28. Done. What's the secret? Nothing. You just treat it like a fraction, right? Go over. Go over the uh, numerator, the denominator, yoink, and you're done. Okay? You can, you can, you don't want to say next, right? Okay. If it works with real numbers, then it works for x's and y's and all that stuff. Okay? Look at this. Is this too difficult to figure out? No. I mean, just do the same thing. Just go numerators, denominators, you're done. So mx times ax. Well, you have an m, you have an a. Then you have an x times an x, so that's going to be an x squared, right? And then on the bottom, you got a 4 times a 2, which is 8, and a y times a y, which is y squared. And, I mean, you know, that's it. What's the big deal? Okay, you can do that. All right, look at this. Pause and copy. Okay, I'm assuming you've finished copying. <clears throat> this looks horrific, but this is just the same thing as the distributed property, right? I mean, you know how to do this, right? 2abc times... You know, 3x plus 2y minus 5d or whatever. I mean, that's piece of cake. You got it, right? You're just doing the same exact thing. Except you're just doing the numerators together. You're doing the denominators together. And you're, if you can, you can, uh, you know, whittle stuff down and reduce if you need to. I mean, I mean, that's really all there is to it. You already know how to work with fractions, right? We just did it. Look, that's, you did it. You've done it. Okay, that's the, it's the same thing. There's just more of one of them. You're just going to distribute that's all. Not that big of a deal. Okay. Let's go ahead and do one fraction at a time on these. All right. In other words, let's take care of this fraction times the first fraction. So x squared times x squared, 2 plus 2 is 4. y squared times y to the first is going to be y to the 2 plus 1. Okay. Done. We're finished with that one. Okay. Then the top, x squared times negative 3y to the third. Well, the 1 times 3 is 3. I'll go x squared and I'll go y to the third. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Y squared times M. And <clears throat> not that big of a deal. The only thing you could do is you can cancel on one of these fractions. You can reduce it a little bit. Which one of them can you cancel a little bit? It's this one, right? If you have a Y to the third power, in other words, Y times Y times Y on the top, and then Y to the second power, Y times Y on the bottom, and just a Y, right? In other words, 3 minus 2 is just one. So you can go, that's gone, and this will be not y to the third, but just y. And that's all there is to it. You haven't done anything strange or unusual. When you look in your book, especially let's say at the beginning of the year, if you look at think problems like this, you go, oh, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Oh no, you know. And really, it, it, you know, if you look at these as just multiplication and subtraction problems, that's really all they are. And you already know how to mess with fractions, so we're just doing it with these. So they look super complicated, but they're not too bad. All right, go ahead and pause again. <clears throat> okay, and again, this is no different. The only thing different is this has no denominator. You know what? Stick one in there. That's fine. Let's do this one first. Yoink. Okay, m times axp, fine. Maxp. All right, z times mk, zmk. And by the way, you can go ahead and right now and reduce if you want to, right? We're done with this, right? How can you reduce this fraction right here? What goes away? The m's do, right? Gone. And if you want to go ahead and write it again, AXP over ZK, 
That's it. Okay, let's do the second one. All right, minus. Well, 1 times a 2 is still 2. Uh, m to the 1st times m to the 4th is m to the 5th, and that's going to be p to the 4th. And then over here, I've got a z times a 1, which is a z. And that's it. We're done. We don't have to solve this. We don't have to do anything to this. Nothing. We're done. We don't have, that's all, you, all, all we've done is an addition problem. That's all this is. Do you know how to add 1 and 4 to 5? That's all you're doing. Do you know how to multiply fractions, numerators, denominators? The answer to those questions is yes, I'm sure. Okay. All right. Let's try another one. Pause and copy. Okay. Again, no big whoop here. I mean, we're just going to do, you know, over one. And there are three of them. Horrors. Who cares? All right. Let's just do one at a time. Take care of it here. A times B, or A, B times this. Well, I know there's going to be an X, right? That's all there is. But A times A is A squared. B times B is B squared, okay? Then I have C squared times C to the first is C to the third, okay? Done. A plus and a new fraction. Two times one is two. Uh, a, there's no A there, so just put an A. So B times a B is a B squared, and then an X, and then a C squared times the one is gonna be C squared. Done. Minus this time. And then four times AB is just four AB, right? Okay, and then C squared times C squared is C to the four. Okay, now look at these very quickly. Can we reduce anything at all? A's and B's and C's, no, no, and then no, no, that's it, we're done. Okay, all right. The second part of this is something that looks super complicated and makes your problem sets look, look super, super complicated because of all these, ooh, there's a minus, there's a negative exponent, all this stuff and so on. So let's look at, at um, taking care of these. Now, do you recall that four squared means four times four, which is 16, right? Okay. The four to the negative two, don't forget, the definition of a number to a negative exponent is the same thing, but it's going to be, in other words, you're looking at this as if it's over a one. You can visualize that if you want to. This just needs to go down there. The four stays the same. The base always stays the same. The only thing that changes is the sign of that exponent. That turns into a positive 2. And you have to put something up here. If there's nothing already up there, it's going to be a 1. So 1 over 4 squared is the same thing as 1 over 4 squared, which is 16. So the answer to this is 1 over 16. And if you want to, if you see these from now on, like, and you recognize, oh, yeah, that's going to be 1 over 16. Or if you see 10 to the negative 2, you, oh, that's 1 over 100. That's fine. You can just write that there. But uh, anyway, that's those two. Now let's take a look at a slightly different uh, addition to these, a little bit of a twist to them. It's really not that bad at all. When you see this in your head, you've got to think of this as an opposite. The, the question they are asking is, what is the opposite of 4 squared? In this case, you're going to go 4 squared is 16. Then you're going to go, okay, the opposite of that is negative 16. We are not saying negative 4 times negative 4 in this at all. We're saying 4 squared is 16. The opposite of that, negative 16. Now this one looks kind of funky too, but let's take, part of, uh, take it apart here. Forget that right now. Let's work on this. Well, it doesn't matter if there's parentheses in it. You're just going to go 4 times 4 is 16, right? At the end, you go, yoop. The opposite of that is negative 16. Okay, it's an important distinction. Now here's where it gets really, where you go and go, oh my gosh, look how complicated this is. Oh, yeah. It really isn't if you just take your time and just, you know, just be very careful about what you do and you, you flip stuff and I'll show you. Now, don't forget, you can always visualize this as something over one. That's a very helpful thing to be able to do. And you know the rule too, right? So when you see this uh, you know, negative exponent, you can go down there and flip only the sign of the exponent, not the base. So what this will turn into, of course, there's a one up top. This base stays the same negative four. The thing that gets changed is a negative two to a positive two, okay? So we already know what the, the numerator is. That's just going to be one. Now, again, the question you're asking on this one is, what's the opposite of four squared? Well, the opposite of four squared is negative 16. You can write it like that if you want. Or if you want to apply a negative to the entire thing, since a positive divided by a negative is a negative, you can do it that way too. Either one of those is fine. You see it in your book. Now, look at this thing. That's horrible looking, isn't it? Whew. Wow. Okay. 
Well, it's not that bad. It doesn't really matter too much. Okay. But again, let's visualize this as being over one. Let me get that, that, that uh, outline out of the way there. Okay. You know, the, the uh, key on these is just taking your time and being careful with those signs. Okay. Don't forget, this goes down here. And the whole thing turns into, uh, it's going to be the opposite end, and parentheses, and the four. Everything looks exactly the same, except for the sign of this. That'll be a positive two. And you got to have a one up there, okay? Well, what is four squared? 16. The opposite of four squared? Negative 16. So it's exactly the same answer we just got a second ago. Sometimes these turn to be the same. All right. Okay, we have A, B, C, D, E, and F. So go ahead and give A a whirl, and you know, go ahead and pause it, and then come back when you're finished. Okay, well, I mean, this is no big deal. x squared times x squared, x to the fourth. y times y, y squared. Done. And a minus sign. 3 times 1 is just 3. x squared times y squared is x squared y squared. y times m is ym. Now, the only thing you need to do on this, look, look and see if there's one more step. What is it? You tell me. What is it? You can cancel, right? There's a y to the second divided by y to the first. If you can visualize here y times y, and down here just a y, that means this y goes away, and instead of y squared, it turns into y to the first power. And there you go. Okay, that's all you need to do. All right, go ahead and try b. Give it a whirl, and uh, you know, pause it and come back. Okay, I'm just going to stick a one underneath this so I can visualize this as a fraction. But uh, let's just go across. Uh, let's do this one first. AM times XM, I got an A, I got an X, I got an M times M, there it is. N uh, denominator, I got an A, I got a B squared times a B to the first, that gives me B to the third. Now look what I can do, look, how about the A's, what happens to the A's? A divided by A is one, no need to write the A's at all, okay? That's my first term, and we did that pretty quickly, okay? Look at the second term, it's going to be a minus, because there's a minus there. All right, three times one, just three. A times A is A squared. M times B, let's put in B. B squared times one is B squared. Okay, now look at this. You've got a B to the first here. In other words, this is your fraction, blah, 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 and then there's a B. And down here you have a B times a B, right? So you can cancel like that, right? Then you have a B left at the bottom. So this can go away. You know what? I'll erase it since I erased the first term. Gone. And then, here we go. And that's the second term. Okay? Done. The plus, 6 times whatever that is. Okay, so I got a 6, I got an A, I got an M to the first times M to the first is M to the second. B squared times B squared is B to the fourth. And can we reduce these any more at all? Nope. We're done. So there we go. Eventually, we're going to combine these three fractions into one fraction with a common denominator. Okay, remember common denominators and numbers? Okay, we'll get that, we'll get to that sometime in the future though. All right, go ahead and uh, give C a whirl and we'll come back together in a second. Pause it. Okay, now look at this, God, look at this lineup of things. It looks horrible, doesn't it? All those in a row, it's like a nightmare. It's okay, not that big of a deal. All right, let's put it over a one. I always like to do that just so it looks good. Okay, well, by definition, we're gonna rewrite this fraction. This chunk up here goes down to the bottom. The negative stays the same. The four stays the same. The only thing that changes is the negative two turns into a positive two. We got a one up there if there's nothing left, okay? So one stays a one. Four squared is 16. The opposite of four squared is negative 16. And of course, you can write it like this if you want to. The whole thing is negative one sixteenth, all right? Pause it and try D. Don't forget, you know, D, you know, you could, if you wanted to, write this part here. You could go like this, and you could write it like this, on this part of a 1. And then you could move this, negative 4, down at the bottom, where it says negative 4 to the second power, and then do the division. 1 divided by a fraction, okay? Probably, though, the easier thing to do would be, don't forget, the, the whole rule is on these negative exponents is you can flip these things from one side to the other of the fraction. So what I would do is um, move this up here, okay? So I would also eat half a gallon of peanut butter chocolate ice cream, but I'm not saying you should do that as well, but I would probably do this thing as well. Okay, so let's look at this. 
you you know this just goes up here the entire thing stays the same except for the exponent so it's going to be the opposite of four stay the same then a positive two and then if you want to write over one that's fine i mean you don't have to but you know it's going to be divided by one since there's nothing left down there anymore well what is the opposite of four squared well, the answer is negative 16 right there you go the answer okay all right e looks very complicated pick it apart one little thing at a time do it correctly you'll be very surprised to get it right maybe i shouldn't say that you'll be very satisfied to get it right okay go ahead and pause it and try e okay well again you can put this over one easiest thing to do and then move the whole hump down there if you move the whole hump down there you got nothing left on top except the one because there's nothing else to you know there's nothing else to take its place so the entire thing stays the same except for the negative three right so you got an opposite you got an opposite four you got a positive three does yours look like that if it does fantastic that is like 90 percent or almost half of the problem all right forget this negative right now ignore it okay pretend it's a uh, some kid asking you to dance at a homeschool prom. Okay, just go back and get another you know, cup of uh, like you know watered down Kool Aid. All right, let's work on this right now. What is negative four times negative four times negative four? Well, negative four times negative four is sixteen. Uh, sixteen times negative four is negative sixty-four. So we have negative sixty-four. We also have the one that stays the same. We have this negative brought over. Well, you know as well as I do, the opposite of negative 64 is positive 64. There you go. That's the answer. Or, if you want to do the decimal, it's 0 0.015625. Okay. All right. Pause it and try F. All right. Let's the same exact thing. Well, let's just flip this thing to the very top here. I'll, I'll just write it over. And by the way, if you're the kind of person that needs to, and I would assume a lot of you guys probably need to, Go ahead and write an extra step. Take 15 seconds and write this thing over one time so you get it right the first time. And just be very careful with your negatives. Okay, so let's, I'm going to flip the whole fraction. This hunk goes up there, and it looks like this, a negative. The parentheses, this. The only thing that changes, only, only, only that, which will be a 3. And there's nothing left down there but a 1. You don't have to write something over 1. Anything divided by 1 is just the same thing as it is. So there's no point in doing that. So just get rid of the fraction. You're good to do that. Okay. Well, let's forget this right now. Let's work on negative 4 to the third power. Well, negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. We already did that once with negative 64. Right? So there we go. And then the opposite sign goes there. So the answer is positive 64. And there we go. Okay. You can do these. Just be very careful with your negative. You got to remember, when it, anytime you see a, a, an exponent with a negative or, or a negative exponent, you can, if it's up here, just go down there and change nothing except for the exponent um, value from a negative to a positive or positive to a negative, whatever. Once you get that going, I mean, you got it. So anyway, okay. You guys have a great day. Thank you, and see you next time.